What's up beautiful people? Thank you very much for clicking on today's video. I can't thank you all enough. The existing people and the new people who managed to find me, all I have to do is thank the algorithm gods that they have blessed me today with your presence. And other than that, I will be just getting straight to the video. The only thing I have to mention quickly is all of the Patreon members, all of the members of the channel. I can't thank you all enough for being there. And also at the same time, any materials that I use will be in the description of the video as well. So you can click on those links and all the materials and create something like this yourself. I do break down every single thing that I build or how I built it, so hopefully you can do this yourself from home. As always, peace and love, I'm out. The first thing I use are these black foam board cutouts. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can actually order these yourselves. And I always use these as a main core thing or predominantly these to actually shape and carve out my terrarium or vivarium paludarium, whatever it is that you're building. By that I mean if you're using any water systems, you want to create something that's sort of different to the usual scape, these make it that much easier. Don't ever, ever, ever worry about the mess of these boards because all of this will be hidden. And by that you can see, I completely silicon seal that in and then just paste in silicon. You want to make sure that this is here for a lifetime. This foam stops all the debris going down into that filter box section and as well what I do is I top it off with some mesh membrane which stops the heavy heavy debris going into the foam and also blocking that off. The reason you need to do that is because the water won't flow through the foam and into that back box section and the filter will just constantly be getting uh, clogged up. Either that or the filter will be pumping out the water too quick for that box section to fill up for the uh, filter to actually physically pick it up and take it across the tank down there. The reason we leave it like this though and open is because we can then maintain and clean that filter. This is the easiest section where you just put in some membrane, silicon seal your sections on and all you're doing at this point remember is you're still creating your vision, you're still piling up your mount, amounts or whatever you want to use it for and just remember this is rigid, it can change at any point even if you've already got a vision, something else might pop up at the same time which actually happens throughout this video and um, this is the main sort of body of the hardscape so far. If I had to do this differently, I would probably add the larger pieces in and then start to do the sides and background, but I only will be doing two sides of this thing, the back, um, the, well, the very back of the tank and the right side. This log fit pretty cushy in here. I did decide that I would actually have the water section slightly smaller than I initially anticipated, but the reason for this is because I wanted to create a nice area where there'll be a deep, compact layer of soil, of which if anything I decide to keep in here can always use that. Isopods or anything else other side will be going in here. All I'm doing here is testing out certain plant pots, hardscape, rocks, twigs, everything. Just making sure it's all okay and fits in the, the places I wanted it to fit in. Once you decide where you're going to put the main bulk of your plants, um, that's pretty much it. You start with the rest of the process. Now, the reason I chucked the uh, rocks on the left side is purely because I don't want that area to be actually filled with water. I'm creating, in a sense, a drainage layer above that water level. So they'll be deep with uh, pea pebbles. That'll actually add as a good area for good bacteria to uh, develop and grow and beneficial bacteria. And then at the same time, it also adds that canvas where I can add plants and deep sections of soil um, using, again, a membrane, which will stop anything going into that soil or seeping through. This is a pretty simple process now. All I'm doing is silicon sealing every area that I can that I don't want to be seen or all of the hard rough edges that you know don't look nice to the eye these foam boards all I do is cover it in silicon seal and then um, just chuck on some rocks I make a, a, a mix between cocoa fiber some pea pebbles not a, a mass amount and then a smaller sort of river grain sand which is around one or two mil slightly larger than um, you know your fibers or your sand mix um, or sa uh, play sand, sorry, but it's just slightly larger than that, which creates a nice um, scale ratio. I'll be running through the filter system or how that works in a little bit more detail. But shout out to Watsoans for actually bringing this topic up because sometimes I do brush over it. Now these tubes in particular go into this piece of cork bark. 
I put filter floss in the center of it so that acts as a small mechanical filtration system. And at the same time, all of these tubings and different things let me control the amount of flow or how much flow and drip balls I want. I'll show you the filter in a moment, but all I do is cut squares into these boards and then I actually just silicon seal them in so nothing can go inside. I'll show you the fill safe in a moment, um, which actually also protects this in total. Now here you'll see a T-bar going from the filter. This is one river system that goes from the right side down to the left which piles down. This one again, one more tube at the very very top. Another T-bar which is drilled into a pipe which I make slits for. And all of these smaller tubes are slit and fit perfectly in it. This means I can create different drip walls, different river systems and also at the same time with the slightly larger tubes I get to actually then create river effects or something that's more fast flowing. The rest of this though is predominantly hardscape. I'm just making sure I've filled in every single spot that I could. I'm making sure nothing's visible in terms of the actual, um, I guess, you know, lumpy side of the tank, like the filter box and everything else there that you can physically see. That's not very nice to look at. Now that all the bare bones of the tank are actually in, any hard edges you can always get off with a razor blade and you can see here I'm filling in from the right to the left, um, slightly to the left but at the back mainly and I want that right side clear and that slightly open there. I want to give it a nice sense of scale towards the back end, almost as if you're looking in this huge cave, this mysterious underwater sort of cave with a river that runs through on one side. The left, I want it to be like a small pool of water just because I want it to be very shallow. So for whatever I keep in here or decide to keep in here, it'll actually add a diverse body water level. So I'll have that very shallow area, that midsection and that very deep part towards the front of the tank. By showing you right now, without revealing too much of this tank, here is your small pool of water. There's your medium level and there's your deeper level. You then have those drip waterfalls running through hitting different types of aquatic moss like java moss, christmas moss, etc. which run right throughout this whole setup. In addition, adding these smaller spiderwood branches throughout, it also creates extra damp areas which slowly drip over time, which means you can also keep certain types of moss in these areas. All I'm doing here, as you can see, is adding the lid to that back filter box. I just cut one corner where that cable is, add uh, hot glue or silicon, the um, small pieces of the same form to the back so it just it basically the lid just sits on those level and then that way you can always get into the filter easily and take it off but i've turned the water on and i absolutely i'm over the moon having the water run right and everything else is the main thing about this because if the water system didn't work then it's pointless i'm good you can see that these drips are working effectively. I actually chose not to have that waterfall on the left side or, or that small river system you can see running through. I only kept it on the right side and reduced the flow slightly. Everything else was pretty good or how I wanted it. I then put some filter floss inside that cork piece as well. The reason I did that was just to divert the flow a little bit. But be prepared to do a lot of water changes. When you fill it up and start to clean it all out, that fiber that I've been adding expands in a lot of the places and it does create a mess. So you'll be doing water changes, I'd say 30, 40 times. I just want to go back on that floss and show you inside it, just so you can see exactly how I've done it. Now that I've got the main part of the hardscape down, this is actually where I can start planting it. This is easily the most fun part of the actual scape itself. When you start to get those plants in there and your sort of vision starts to come to life. I do use a lot of that filter floss to block in those areas. The reason I do so is just so things like isopods, um, you know, even geckos or whatever I decide to keep in here, it won't fall down into that water section. It'll give them that deep area of soil where they can physically burrow in it without them worrying about falling down into that water or water section below. Now that all of that heavy, heavy hardscape is in, every single element that I wanted to be in there is done. This is the most fun part of the build. You can now start to actually plant it. Everything that you do will start to come to life. And the beautiful thing about that is every single thing you've been doing has led to this moment. Planting the scape and making sure everything just fits where you wanted it to. I'll go through a few things which are the, uh, some of the planting selections. I did decide to use quite a lot of Anubius Nana Petite, Java Moss, Christmas Moss, Spike Moss, and Swaz Fatong, which you'll see a little bit later on when I introduce one, a couple of the inhabitants in here. I also use on the left side some asparagus fern, leading up to the canopy I've got a Boston fern, some Cryptanthus, Trade Sentia, 
um, and some jewel orchids as well. The mosses I used, I used some brachythecium, some spike moss, and I also used some feather moss. But I'm really, really liking this. I'm absolutely over the moon after that whole build process, losing so many brain cells, inhaling that silicon. At the same time, you know, this is just kind of exactly how I wanted it to be in my own, you know, in my own vision. It has changed slightly, but not too much. And that's why I always say, never worry about how that hard elements look like the silicon, the blocks, the foam. One of the first things that I do add in here, which I will show a little bit later on in the video, are the tropical springtails. I also added in some orange springtails as well. I do want a variety of springtails, so I added the oranges in, which are these ones you will see here. And I also do add the standard um, tropical springtails in here as well. Part of the cleanup crew, I add some Armadillidium klugi Dubrovnik. From everything that I keep, what I keep in terms of isopod species, which I do keep 40 to 50 species, if you don't know. I do also run a store, and unfortunately I only ship to the UK. However, I also do a lot of other things on the store, um, as well as isopods, even certain dart frog species. But this is really starting to come to life. You'll notice that in the water section there, some things are starting to take. The water section's getting a little bit more brown, but that's all of the tannins coming out of those fibers, out of those um, cork bark pieces, the spider wood, the bog wood, everything. And this stuff is actually just absolutely perfect for these shrimp. This is where I got the Swarsfetong and the spike moss from. I actually picked it up from a local breeder, a huge colony of uh, cherry shrimps. This isn't a high grade of cherry shrimp. The reason being is because if I'm getting a certain species or if I decide on vampire crabs or whatever it is, I want a very hardy species. And if they are or run the risk of being nipped by the vampire crabs, I don't want to go in there with a super, super expensive species. So obviously what I did when I got them home is I climatized them. And then I also at the same time, while they're in that bag climatizing, I decided to start doing some water changes or um, I did about 50% of water change which just means the water was a little bit more clear, but at this point, I just don't want to take too much away from that water section. I want it to all set in, bed in, and every single time I'm doing big water changes at first, um, you're taking quite a lot of the good bacteria away. So if you are doing these water changes at a tank that's about two weeks old, because it's two weeks old now, at this point, I'd always advise you to just add some ben uh, beneficial bacteria back into that setup so you're not losing or nothing's crashing in there. So this is where I'm reaching out to you guys. I really, really need your help, beautiful people. Let me know in the comments below what I should keep in this. I still haven't actually decided. I've had a suggestion of green gnolls, giant day geckos, uh, vampire crabs, all sorts of things. So let me know what you think I should keep in here or what would be best suited in here. Some people are saying newts, some people are saying salamanders, and all of these things for me would be super, super cool to keep in here. So just make sure you let me know what I should be keeping in here or what you think I should, because I want to know in the comments below. If I actually like the comment or like the suggestion and it gets a lot of likes in the comment box as well, I'll actually choose that suggestion and I'll start to keep that inhabitant in here. I am potentially wanting like a more of a multi-species, although it is a multi-species paludarium at the moment because we've got the isopods, different species of springtails, and we've now got the shrimp in there. But I also wanted some additional things, um, you know, maybe it's in the canopy and in the water section. Let's see if we can hit 300 likes on this video. It would be a huge achievement for me, but it would mean the world if we could get it to 300 likes. I also wanna ask, what animals do you keep? Is there anything that you keep in particular that you absolutely love? Let me know in the comments. But this is it after around two weeks of being built. Everything's just going really, really well. Things are bedding in nicely and it gave me a really good idea or indication on how well the um, Sagittarius subulata, or a lot of the aquatic plants do in immersed growth in humid, very, very humid and wet environments, which is kind of what I'd hoped for, especially the Anubius nana petite. We are almost at the end of the video though, 
So the first thing I want to do is thank all of the people who have remained in the now here all the way to the end of the video. So I can't thank you enough for all of that support and really boosting the algorithm for me. But as always from me, peace and love. I'm out.